The next uh, speaker of today is uh, Rita Kristin Hansen. Rita Kristin has worked for many years with eHealth and di digital health services. Now she's uh, finalizing her uh, master's degree in public health, and we are lucky to have her here today to present the main findings from her master. So I'll give the word to Rita <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thanks for the introduction. And thank you for having me here. It's a pleasure. And I hope this will be interesting for you all. First of all, I have to say a thank you, a big thank you to both my supervisors, my supervisor from UIT, Nikita, and also Elia, from uh, my co-supervisor from NSE, and all uh, of Elia's uh, colleagues. That has helped me a lot. Thank you all. Well, uh, the background for this thesis, which I, I didn't hand in yet, but I will soon, um, is uh, vaccination um, and my, um, my interest for, for this topic. Uh, and also, of course, uh, social media. And I found a way to combine these two. And that's uh, very interesting, at least for me. Uh, and we know all that vaccination is a success story, and it prevents more than 20 life-threatening diseases. Uh, despite of this success story, uh, we know that there are insufficient access to vaccines. 20 million infants each year have insufficient access to vaccines. And some countries, in some countries, the progress uh, with this work has stalled or even been reversed. And UK is one of these examples uh, of a country that in uh, 2017 achieved the WHO's uh, measles uh, elimination status, but they lost it two years later. And now there are ongoing efforts to increase the vaccination rate to protect the British people from the measles virus. And as we can see from this map, um, in almost all countries in the world, the support for vaccination is high, but there are a belt in the northern parts, northern part uh, in Europe, Russia and North America that uh, where the support is lower. And this is just, this is despite that we know that uh, most vaccines are both safe and effective. One of the explanations that o, uh, ECDC uh, highlights of this is um, that we, we may have become used uh, to the benefits of vaccination. Our collective memory of how devastating some diseases and their consequences can be is weakening. Um, ECDC concludes that there is a need for commun communicating of the, F, uh, of the correct uh, scientific facts to enable policymakers and the public to make informed choices. So this is the background. Um, I wanted to see uh, how we can exploit social media's potential. So what do really work regarding the use of social media in vaccine delivery. And we have studies that have concluded that there are need for cost-effective interventions where the outcome is measurable in terms of vaccination rates among children of vaccine-refusing parents. And we also know that web-based interventions are low-cost and broadly accessible approaches to deliver important public health messages. So the aims of this thesis is, of course, to identify research gaps uh, and also investigating if it is helpful to reach out to the public via social media to communicate the importance of vaccination. I also wanted to, to search for an experience to build on when trying to optimize education and encouragement in terms of rising the vaccine rates. Um, 
I also wanted to investigate or discover uh, the main features of the field according to the characteristics of the successful vaccination campaigns delivered through social media. Um, and my questions when I started on this were if there are any specific social media channels uh, that seem more effective and what are the theories or models or frameworks that is used by the most effective vaccination campaigns on social media and what are the target population of the su successful social media interventions. And now I have to come with a spoiler alert. I do not have these answers, <laughs> uh, but I have more questions. So to do this, we have conducted a systematic review in accordance with the Cochrane Handbook for Systematic Reviews of Interventions. And the reporting of this systematic review was performed according to the PRISMA guidelines. And of course, um, um, the protocol was registered in Prospero. Only randomized controlled trials were included, and the population has been public in general. And in this, uh, this review, uh, the definition of social media was a platform that provides the opportunity to share information between the provider of information and the receiver of the information, also descri described as a two-way communication. Uh, this means that concepts that were named as web-based intervention, internet-based intervention, e-health, or interactive health communication were included. And this gave us some limitations. Um, we saw that some of these uh, interventions are, will not be generalizable to other settings or environments. Yes, and I could talk for ages about that. <laughs> well, we searched through six databases, but we only got 385 articles, and 13 of them were included. Uh, three studies um, or three articles stems from the same protocol, and this is from Kaiser's per Permanent. Uh, it's a study um, performed in um, Kaiser's Permanent in Colorado. Uh, they all used the same population for the randomized studies, but they measured different outcomes. And we, of course, did the risk of uh, bias um, assessment. And five of these 13 studies are of good quality. The three studies from Kaiser's Permanent is, uh, is uh, among them, those. And three of the studies uh, has a fair quality. Um, all the countries in the world is not represented in this review, as you can see, but US is with uh, eight studies, China, Jordan, Israel, Australia, and Canada as well. Definitely most studies from US on this topic, as far as I can see. And the uh, interventions covered most Facebook, as it is the most used social media in the world, world according to Smart Insights. Uh, we also got this study website with vaccine information and social media components. And that is from these three studies from Kaiser's um, Permanente in Colorado. We also got Twitter, WhatsApp, Healthy Me, with this, uh, which is a um, um, page from um, uh, Australia, and also YouTube represented in this review. Most of the vaccines covered are HPV, but also vaccines in general, and of course also seasonal influenza vaccine. Um, and I find this very interesting, but I, I will not um, 
elaborate on, on that on this um, presentation, but HPV seems to be very interesting uh, vaccine to uh, uh, combine with the social media. And that is, uh, I find that very interesting. The outcome, uh, the, the three outcomes from this thesis uh, have a quite skewed proportion in the included reports. Um, and I would say that this also mirrors the high level of heterogeneity, which provide limited potential to compare the studies quantitatively in a meta-analysis. So from now on, um, I will say this is only my reflections. This is not peer reviewed yet, but I would say that there is definitely a potential in social media. If we use it actively, consciously, and as a tool to reach the target population. And I would also say that it might be effective in increasing of knowledge of immunization, which in turn, in the long run, can increase the vaccine rate in a population. But it looks like uh, from this work uh, that we um, <laughs> that we cannot exclusively use social media as the only tool, since there are complex structures that work together uh, when it comes to vaccine acceptance. So, in order to succeed, seems like authorized uh, personnel would keep uh, should keep uh, a close eye on and moderate discussions, um, and also that it should involve health personnel uh, or other skilled personnel of developing interventions intended for social media. Yes. So the conclusion is, of course, we need more research. <laughs> well, and also that from this work, it, it seems to be easier to find studies on how social media leads to increased vaccine resistance and spread of misinformation. It also seems to be a need for more knowledge about the utilization of how social media can be used as an optimal, optimal way to improve vaccine rate in a population. And it also may be a need for randomized studies that measure outcome in a standardized manner, that measure the effect of one intervention at a time, so that grouping and analyzing of synthesis is possible and gives meaningful results. So that was what I had. Thanks a lot for having me. <laughs>